Hey YouTube family! Happy day after Thanksgiving, Black Friday, if you are in the US. If you are not, um, then happy Friday, I guess. I'm back with an update um, a little bit later than I thought. I did kind of find a place to film in my house with a terrible like LED light shining in my face, which is making like crazy shadows. Looks like I haven't slept in a year, um, but that's all right. <laughs> You're not necessarily here to look at me, right? You just want to hear what I have to say maybe. Um, so yeah, uh, in this video, I'm going to talk a little bit about the process that I'm going through right now in Ontario as part of the bariatric program, trying to have a um, conversion from my VSG surgery, which I had almost six years ago. My six year surgery is uh, in a week, November 30th. It'll be six years since I had my surgery at Mexicali Bariatric. Um, yeah, six years. Wow. May have to make a video about that too. Um, so yeah, I have not had any problems with the VSG surgery in particular, or side effects, so to speak, but the big side effect is that I have had acid reflux issues or GERD basically since I had surgery and have not been able to go off of any kind of PPIs to control that. And um, in fact, it's just gotten worse over time, especially in the last year, year and a half. And that is causing some other health issues, which I will also update on. And so that's why I'm seeking a conversion. I again got reprimanded today at my appointment for calling it a revision. So it's a conversion. <laughs> um, so yeah, I <clears throat> wanted to make a video when I first went to my first session, but honestly, there was really nothing to talk about because it was a super boring waste of my time as I thought it would be, but there wasn't even anything like any funny stories. So um, I kind of waited until I had something to actually talk about. Um, so October 15th, I went to a general session about weight loss surgery, um, and that's sort of the first step in the process. So we did go to that. Um, again, two hours of information I already knew since I've had surgery. So, And then two weeks after that, I needed to go to a, um, a nutrition session where they talk about um, how to eat after surgery and, you know, just generally healthy ways of eating and talk about, you know, things that can make you overeat, making good choices, all that stuff. Um, again, stuff that I already knew. The one thing that I will say was a bit of a surprise and, and very positive, I thought, was the way that they approach things. Uh, I mean, I know a number of people who have had surgery through the Ontario Bariatric Program around the same time that I did. And at that time, they were heavily, you know, into like BMI and goal weights and very numbers based. Um, they've somehow changed their approach, it seems, to be a lot more sort of based around the weight that is comfortable for you. So they talk about not a goal weight, but, you know, the best weight for you. And that's the weight that they hope that you are going to achieve and maintain. So uh, they talk a lot about maintenance, which is great. They talk a lot about achieving your best weight um, and how to do that. And then they talk a lot about, um, you know, how BMI is not actually a great indicator of pretty much anything. And specifically said that the only way that BMI is actually used in this program is as a way of qualifying people. But after that, they never use it again. So I thought that was very interesting and I, uh, I kind of applaud them for, I guess, moving forward and understanding that uh, weight loss is not always about being a certain exact weight or being the weight that it says on a chart somewhere and that everyone is different and everyone has their own goals um, for weight loss. So yeah, I thought that was really good and I was like, awesome. I don't feel quite as like freaked out <laughs> by being part of this program. So that was the past two appointments. Today I had what was really my first like real appointment. Um, and that was with the nurse practitioner. Uh, they call it your pre-op assessment appointment. It's really not like pre-op to me means like right before surgery. Um, but this is just an assessment to allow them to figure out what kind of testing you particularly will need to do based on your history. Um, any barriers to having surgery, whether those be physical or mental illnesses, um, the type of drugs that you might be taking, anything that might complicate surgery or might change the type of surgery that's required. Because I am a previous bariatric surgery patient, but through not through the Ontario program because I was self-pay in Mexico. My journey will be a little bit different through the program. Um, first, all of my information has to go to the surgeon. Um, in this case, I believe she mentioned that it would be Dr. Hong. Um, so all of my information has to go, I'm assuming, to Dr. Hong, who then has to review it, and he will determine if and how I can progress through the program. Um, so basically, the surgeon has to sign off on the fact that I can be part of the program and can progress through. Um, 
there could be a reason why they would say no. I'm not sure what that would be, but it's possible. Um, so all of my information will be submitted and I do have to um, get a copy of my OR report from my surgery in Mexico so that they can see that. I do have to have barium swallow so they can see the status of you know things at the moment. I have recently had an upper GI uh, endoscopy, also a, um, uh, when am I getting at? Ultrasound, also an ultrasound. So those things, um, those results also will have to go to them. And then with all that information, he'll decide, um, I guess the way forward. Uh, I still will have to have another ultrasound done. I still will have to have a barium swallow done. And I still will have to see, um, I believe at the very minimum, the nutritionist or the dietitian. Um, <clears throat> I don't know whether I need to see the social worker or not. Uh, that wasn't something that was mentioned, although it may still be part of it, I'm not sure. But those are the appointments that I will need to go through. Um, what I was told, and again, I don't know, you know, how good an indication this is. The nurse said that she feels it will be at least six months until I would have sur surgery scheduled. That's for a number of reasons. One is because their dietitian, they're booking into March at the moment. Um, and I can't even book any appointments until Dr. Hong has signed off um, on me in the program. So it's very likely that it will be at least six months since I have surgery, which honestly is, is fine. I mean, I'm not in like a huge hurry. I'm okay with waiting um, that time. So there's that. Um, what else? Oh, so <laughs> um, one of the complications and another reason why I may have to wait a little bit, um, not a little bit longer necessarily, but I won't be sort of fast tracked is my anemia, um, which is still an issue. So in my last video, I think I had said I had gone to see the specialist. He said, great, you're done your iron infusions. Seems like everything is okay. You're saying you feel fine. We're gonna do blood work for you today, but unless that comes back with some issues, you'll be great. Perfect. Well, the problem was that I got a call from him the very next day saying, hey, your blood work came back and your numbers are still down. Um, so my hemoglobin was um, above either, uh, actually I don't think it was above, it was just under an acceptable level, which he said was okay. My iron was still very low. I think I was still at like seven or five, or, I don't know, still low. Um, so that's still not good. So what that meant was that um, clearly the iron infusions still needed to be having them um, because obviously after a few months without them, my numbers just went down again. So I am now um, on iron infusions every two weeks and then I believe I have one or two more of those and then I go to just a monthly infusion and that will be until April. Um, and so that is something that they're actually concerned about. Uh, they don't really want you to have surgery while you have very low counts like that for a number of reasons. So my iron has to get better um, for in order for me to have surgery, which in this case is kind of a catch-22 because part of the reason I'm trying to get surgery is so that I can get off the PPIs, which are in this, you know, in the doctor's opinion, a big reason why I'm having anemia issues. So, um, yeah, it's one of those things. It's a bit of a catch-22, but hopefully these infusions will allow me to get my iron up to the point that they're not concerned about um, me having surgery with these iron levels. So there's also that. Um, the other interesting thing, this is, a, well, different, I guess, than what I was expecting. The nurse practitioner said that she, um, well, she asked me if I knew about uh, a duodenal switch, a DS um, surgery. Um, if you don't know what that is, I'm probably not the right person to explain it. Um, ask Uncle Google, but the like 15 second, I'm not a doctor version is, a VSG is actually the beginning part of a DS. Um, and then the part that's missing in my case is the part where they reroute the intestine, similar to an R and Y, except much farther down in the intestinal system. So what that means is a lot more of your intestine is bypassed. And so a DS is actually the most malabsorptive procedure that you can have, um, which means that a DS comes with a lot of, a much more restrictive, uh, 
I guess, program that you need to follow post-surgery and for the rest of your life. Um, you need to take a lot of vitamins and you have to be very strict about taking them because now you are not absorbing a ton of the food that you're actually eating. You have to eat a high, high amount of protein. You, you know, you're no longer having to eat 60 to 80 grams. You're having to eat 100 to 120 grams of protein a day. Um, you also have to eat more fat as well because you actually don't absorb a lot of the fat that you eat. There's like a percentage, you can find it online, where it'll tell you the approximate per percentage for different things that you absorb, whether that's carbs or whatever. Um, which may sound great, but there are also some things that come along with DS, like, um, I, um, I don't really know the polite way of saying it. Um, some issues with gas um, and a lot of like unpleasant bathroom issues that can occur. So that's maybe not the most delightful part of it. Um, I had always said I would have whatever surgery the surgeon thought was best. I didn't think the surgeon would necessarily say, a, you know, he had to guess as much better than an RNY. The nurse practitioner seemed to think that the surgeon would actually suggest a DS because I've basically already had part of this procedure. Um, so with an RNY, they would actually have to cut my stomach again and make again a smaller pouch and blah, blah. Um, so actually a DS might be slightly easier in a way of a surgery to do. Um, but also she said that because I had such a high starting weight that she felt the surgeon would say a DS would give me a much better chance of, um, uh, I guess, maintaining my weight over the long term um, because of the highly malabsorptive uh, nature of the surgery. Sorry, I can't talk today. <laughs> I'm like, it's distracting. Sorry. Um, yeah, so she really felt like he probably would say that that was his recommendations. She said, you know, I'm not the surgeon, so I can't be positive. I can just tell you from my experience with other patients. I feel like it's likely. Um, so I hadn't really considered it. I mean, I had, but I hadn't. It would not be my first choice, but I feel like if the surgeon felt that that was going to cure my reflux, and honestly, I, I explained to them, like, that is my major thing. Like, I have regained weight because of that to some degree. Um, and so I know that I can lose weight on my own. I've done it. I mean, I did it post-surgery. I did it last year even. Um, so I know I can do that. Um, but because carbs are such a big issue for me and because carbs are one of the only things that I can eat that don't make me feel terrible, it's really difficult. And so um, that is the major thing. I'm not actually looking for additional weight loss from the surgery. Obviously, that's going to happen no matter what. Um, but yeah, so I sort of explained what my reasoning was behind why I was looking for surgery and that will be information that's also passed on to the surgeon and eventually I will obviously, as long as I'm approved, um, see the surgeon and speak with him directly. But um, yeah, that was kind of something I wasn't expecting. So now it's something that I've definitely got to think about. Um, so I don't know. I know, I mean, I know there's a lot of people who have had um, VSG to RNY who are on YouTube. Um, I do know someone locally or vaguely know, used to know, not sure I still have her info, but I did know someone who had VSG to, um, DS as well. Um, hers was a little bit different because she actually just didn't have really enough weight loss through VSG, but either way, um, it is what it is. It's still someone who converted from one to the other. If any of you know someone who's on YouTube and making videos who has gone from VSG to DS, I'm, I'm going to be looking for some of those people. But if you know someone, feel free to drop a link below. Also, um, I do kind of want to do a channel relaunch in um, January. I wasn't gonna actually talk about this in this video, but surprise, I'm gonna relaunch my channel in January and start making um, more consistent videos, not just about WLS, but just about lifestyle things in general, like I said, whether it's about beauty or fitness or whatever. Um, so look out for that. But in conjunction with that, I kind of want to get back into the weight loss community. I've been out of it for a while. So I want to know who you think I should be following who's currently making videos, um, who the uh, the new people are. Um, so yeah, definitely drop a link below. Let me know who I should be following these days. Um, that would be awesome. Uh, I... I'm at 14 and a half minutes. So I don't know if I have anything else to say. Um, Probably not. Maybe I'll make another video 
this week at some point and just kind of catch people up on other stuff. But uh, until then, good to see you guys. Have an awesome weekend. Bye.